This is the Central Angles Arcs and Chords tutorial. Let's begin by discussing the central angle. A central angle is any angle whose vertex is at the center of a circle. So I've drawn in one here. This is central angle YCZ. So I'll write that on the side here. Central angle YCZ. Now something that you may have noticed about this central angle is that it divides the circle into two pieces. You can see the smaller piece between Y and Z that I've highlighted in green, and you can see this larger piece again between Y and Z but going around the outside or the exterior of that central angle. These are known as arcs. An arc is a part of a circle that is unbroken and consists of two endpoints. In this case, the endpoints are Y and Z. Now, the larger arc in purple is called a major arc. That's an arc with its points in or on the exterior of a central angle. And the minor arc is an arc with its points in or on the interior of a central angle. So the interior of this central angle is everything inside the angle right here. And the exterior is all this that's outside of that central angle. Now another important thing to note about central angles is that whatever the angle measure is here of that, me that angle, so angle YCZ, that is also the arc measure of that portion of the circle. So you know that to go in a complete circle, you're going to go around in 360 degrees. So the entire body of the circle in terms of degrees is 360 degrees. So if this particular angle right here happen to be 88 degrees, then this arc measure would actually be 88 degrees as well. Again, if this down here, the central angle were 105 degrees, then the arc that we're referring to in this case, YZ, would be 105 degrees as well. Now when you're given the central angle, you can actually solve for the major arc and the minor arc. For example, if I were to tell you that this central angle right now was 100 degrees. Well, you obviously know that the minor arc here is also 100 degrees. Now to solve for the major arc, you can take the total degree measure of the circle, which is 360 degrees, and you can subtract the minor arc, so in our case 100 degrees. And what you'd get is that your major arc has a total degree measure of 260 degrees. So for this problem, that would be the purple arc all the way around. Now when you're writing arcs in geometry, so for example, let's draw the minor arc here. The minor arc is YZ. And when you're drawing them in geometry, you always draw a little arc over that to indicate that you're referring to an arc. Now sometimes it's more difficult to indicate the major arc. So one way to make it easier is if there happened to be another point. So I'm going to draw in point W down along the bottom here. Now it would be easier to indicate the major arc because that would be Y, W, Z. And we would draw an arc over the top of that as well. So this on the left is the minor arc and this on the right is the major arc. Alright, so one last important topic to cover about arcs is the semicircle. A semicircle is an arc with its endpoints lying on the diameter of a circle. So if I were to draw in a diameter for this circle, in this case diameter XZ, the semicircle here would be highlighted down here on the bottom in blue. All of this region right here would be the semicircle. And a semicircle is always going to have an arc length of 180 degrees. That's because a diameter always cuts a circle in half. And a half of 360 degrees, the distance around the circle, is 180. So in this case, semicircle XWZ has an arc length of 180 degrees. Now let's do a practice problem so you can apply what you've just learned. So in this problem, what I'd like you to do is to solve for all angle and arc measures given that WZ is the diameter of this circle. So let's look at the information that's been presented. We know that WZ is the diameter of this circle. 
And we know that angle YCZ, which is a central angle because it comes from the center here, is 90 degrees as indicated by that 90 degree congruence box. Also, we know that central angle WCX is 58 degrees. So I'm going to begin by making a list of the angles and a list of the arcs that we need to solve for. I see four angles here, which is going to give us four arcs. We've got angle WCX, we've got angle XCY, angle YCZ, and angle WZ. And then again, we have arcs WX, and I'm just going to write the arc that corresponds to that angle that was originally drawn here on the left. Then we have arc XY, arc YZ, and arc WZ. So let's just begin with the angles. We know that angle WCX is 58 degrees because they told us that. And we know that angle YCZ is 90 degrees, because that was also provided. And we also know that angle WZ is equal to 180 degrees. Now you can also write WZ, that angle, as angle WCZ. So now let's go back and solve for that missing angle, angle XCY. Now if this is 90 degrees here, and this is 58 degrees, and you know that this whole length is 180 degrees, that must mean that this top angle right here is also 180 degrees. So what we want to do is take that 180 degrees that we know that whole top angle is, subtract the 90 that we know about, and subtract the 58 that we know about. And what's remaining is going to be this angle right here, which is what we're solving for. When you do that subtraction work, you get 32 for an answer. So that missing angle, angle XCY, must be 32 degrees. Now we can do the corresponding arcs. The corresponding arcs are just going to be equal to that because these are all central angles. So arc WX, which comes from this central angle right here, is going to be 58 degrees. And arc XY, which again comes from right here, angle XCY, is going to be 32 degrees. Arc YZ is going to be 90 degrees. And arc WZ, because it's a semicircle here, is going to be 180 degrees. If you add all those up, you're going to get 360 degrees, which is the distance around any circle. So we know that we're covered here. Now let's move on to chords. A chord is any segment whose endpoints lie on a circle. So in this case, AB is a chord because this segment has its endpoints A and B lying on this circle. Now there's a few pieces of useful information that you should know about chords. The first is that when a radius intersects a chord at a 90 degree angle, it's bisecting that chord. So if we show our radius here, CD, intersecting chord AB at point E, if that radius CD intersects chord AB at a 90 degree angle, it's going to be cutting chord AB into two congruent halves, as denoted by the two blue congruency tick marks here. Now the same is also true for a diameter, because a diameter, like a radius, is a line extending from one point of the circle through the center of the circle. So also keep in mind that if you were to see a radius or a diameter intersecting a chord and bisecting that chord so into two congruent halves, but they didn't tell you that it were intersecting at a 90 degree angle, you would automatically know that it's intersecting at a 90 degree angle. Because any time a radius or a diameter bisects a chord, it does so perpendicularly. So it's a perpendicular bisector. So remember that. A radius can intersect a chord and not do so 
perpendicularly, but if it does so at any other angle other than 90 degrees, it's not going to be bisecting that chord. If it does bisect the chord, then it's intersecting at 90 degrees. Now another important piece of information is that congruent chords have congruent arcs and congruent central angles. So if I were to draw two congruent chords as indicated here, chord WX, which is written in red here, right here, is going to be congruent as indicated by that red congruency tick mark to chord YZ. Now because those two chords are congruent, the central angles that they come from, so in this case angle WCX and angle ZCY, are both going to be congruent to each other to have created those two congruent chords. And because those two central angles are congruent to each other, the arcs that are created by those central angles must also be congruent to each other because as you just learned, the central angle is always going to be equal to the arc that it creates on the edge of the circle. So if these two central angles are equal to each other, then the arcs that they've created, in this case arc WX and arc YZ, are also going to be congruent to each other. So take a moment to digest that and we're going to jump into a practice problem. So what I'd like you to do here is to solve for segment length XZ. Let's begin with what we know. C is the center of our circle here. And this length from C to where it intersects chord XZ has a length of 5. And the length from there to point Y on the circle has a length of 8. Now we know that C to Y, this distance here, is a radius of this circle. And we know that any radius of a circle is going to bisect perpendicularly any chord that it intersects. We can see that it's perpendicular because of that right angle here. So what we want to do is mark that they're also congruent to each other. So that this piece is congruent to this piece. Now all we have to do is to solve for one of these lengths. So from this point I'm just going to call it D for the purpose of this problem, this intersection of the radius and chord. We want to solve from either D to X or D to Z. I'm going to go ahead and solve from D to Z and once we know that length, it's also going to be the length from D to X because those two segments are congruent. So what I'll do here is to draw in another line going from C to Z. And we know that we're dealing with a right triangle here because if that side there is a 90 degree angle, then this side here must also be a 90 degree angle. So now I've created this triangle, CDZ, and we know that one length of the triangle is 5, as indicated here on the smaller leg. And we know the radius of our circle because we know that CY is a radius, and if you add CD and DY together, 5 and 8, you get 13 for a total length of the radius. So the distance from Z to Z must also be 13 because that too is a radius from C to Z. So we have a right triangle here and I'll just redraw it on the side right here. Here's our right triangle. We know that the short side DC has a length of 5 and the hypotenuse across from the 90 here C to Z has a length of 13. Now if you remember your Pythagorean triples, this is a 5, 12, 13. This side must be 12, which means that the length from D to Z must be 12 units long. And since D to Z is congruent to D to X, this length is 12. So the total distance from X to Z must have a length of 24 units.